Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Shonen and Chill, hosted by Zenrado and Oceans. Hello, hello, folks. Hello, and we have uh, an interesting week this week, given the chaos from last week, but we'll talk about that later, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, I, I have a couple of things to say, <laughs> but uh, this week this week was a lot better than last week. It was, it was, it was. Uh, other than that, not too much on the uh, announcement side. If you don't follow me on Twitter, go and do that and follow us both so you can enter to win uh, some some merch that I'm going to be giving away. Some of our Shonen and Chill merch. We have hoodies oh, yeah, now. Just... I forgot we made new, new merch. <laughs> yeah, we just randomly dropped it that one night. Yeah. We got, what do we got now? We got two different kinds of shirts. We got hoodies. We got the cute yeah. out of 10 mug and the rawness and swag out of 10 mug. Yes. Actually, yes. let me just quickly check if anyone else has bought them. Let me just pull it up real quick. Because, yeah, that first day, like, we got hella sales on that one. Yeah, people were, I, I just kind of threw it out. And I was like, would anyone uh, actually get a shirt if we made them? And then a bunch of people were like, yes. Yes, How much shirts please, and yeah. mugs. So I was like, okay. Yeah, damn, like, we got we got some, we got some of them. Um, so yeah, if you want a cool mug or a shirt, buy them. I designed them. I uh, have no degree to show, uh, and to vouch for any of my skills. So, uh, (laughs) all good. Perfect. (laughs) (laughs) Uncertified, unprofessional guy with Photoshop. (laughs) That's how it's supposed to be. It's the thought that counts, right? It's the energy that goes into it. Exactly. (laughs) Uh, all right, well, then let's go ahead and uh, jump into the top threes. What do you got for me? All right. Uh, top three. On number three, I got Blue Box. Okay. Number two. Actually, number two and one are completely interchangeable for me, and it's My Hero and Jujutsu Kaisen. Okay. Okay. Which is definitely a change from last week. That's for sure. It certainly is. Um, yeah. I'm... I think my number three is also going to be Blue Box. Uh, my number two is going to be Undead Unluck, and then my number one is going to be Jujutsu Kaisen. All right, so this is like a more or less a tidy top. Yeah, that's three. Pre- it's pretty clean. Yeah, there's like one yeah. difference really. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, the, I I can already tell you the thumbnail is probably going to be me and like my hero in like a get along shirt. <laughs> <laughs> the the folks watching it can confirm whether or not I actually did it or not. But that's my current <laughs> idea. Okay, I like that plan. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, well, then we'll go ahead and jump in uh, with our first chapter this week, which is going to be uh, Chojin X. Yeah, the totally not weekly series. That is yeah. absolutely weekly that at is, this point. We're, no, we're definitely not going to make this on any kind of schedule. It comes out every, like, six days. <laughs> yeah. like, like, okay. Not only does it come out, like, pretty much weekly, it also always drops, like, the most random-ass times. It like, oh, yeah. You know, all the other series, oh yeah, uh, like Sunday afternoon, so everyone can read them. Shoji next, 4 a.m. on a Tuesday. Right, have fun. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Nex you're not awake? Like, Too bad. Gets home whenever it wants. It's just that kid that doesn't listen to curfew. Just shows up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what do you think of this chapter? Uh, I liked it. I thought it was pretty good. I'm glad the baseball thing is done with. Um, mm-hmm. I like the dynamic with, with Tokyo and the Ellie. So mm-hmm. I'm glad that they're hanging around. Um, and I like her plan that she's going to decide to make money by like being a, I guess, like a hero for hire type thing. She's going to be like a, like a Chojin helper. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a lot of just kind of like that. It was all that kind of stuff. Like what's your, what's your motivation? What's your goal? What's your dream? You seem to have one now. And it kind of just seems like everyone's is pointing toward them just like fighting crime, which I'm cool with. Yeah, exactly. So, I would like to see yeah. more of that. I, I have no idea what the smoke guy is talking about. Uh, where is that? On like page... Page uh, 19, where he's like, oh, yeah. I'm the only the... one that mother should love. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about, bro. You're freaking me out. Well... Anytime a grown man uses the word mother, I'm like, nope. <laughs> nope. Maybe it's just my Sephiroth PTSD. I don't know. But <laughs> It's cannot... going to revive Genova. I, I cannot deal with, with grown men saying mother. <laughs> uh yeah i keep forgetting that because like sephiroth to me is like such a cultural icon i keep forgetting that this whole deal is like uh mommy complexes mm-hmm. uh well 
that's okay. But um, yeah, no, this was actually a really sweet chapter. Like I liked the introspection on everything that uh, they sort of had where everyone's just kind of coming to terms of what just happened, which feels kind of appropriate for what is really the series' first big fight, that they sort of have this rumination of, okay, what does this kind of mean to me as like a non-human? Um, I like that you get this really dramatic, like philosophical scene in the, under the moonlight that is completely ruined by Mr. Sandex's stupid ass face. <laughs> like, oh my god. I really like his face though. It's funny as hell. <laughs> yeah, me too. But the thing is, it like anytime something serious happens, I'm like, oh yeah, wow, I'm really invested. And then I switch the page and it's like, you know, that panel where he's saying, protecting the road from that threat is my pleasure. And he's like a nose the size of Ohio. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yes, this is who I stand. <laughs> Peak masculinity. <laughs> if your jawbone cannot grind meat, <laughs> you you need a you need a catch up yeah, of the is, masculinity. This is the manliest man in history. No, but I also like how he's like actually like pretty faced. Like he's his <coughs> head is a rhombus, and yet his face is like you know pretty twinkle eyes. <laughs> Why does his <laughs> face look like a building block with eyes on it? You know what he looks like? He looks like um, like a JoJo Part 1 character, but you took the face, <laughs> replaced it with Araki's current art style, and then shrunk it by 50%. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, now I want to make that the thumbnail. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, it's going to be a toss-up, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh god. god but yeah no this was a fun chapter um i'm you i think if this chapter had come out in like three months i would have really kind of not been a fan of it but because now we've gotten this rhythm i'm not actually too miffed anymore when we get like you know a more um like a laid back chapter where it's not a yeah, lot exactly of, yeah yeah because there's really an urgency anymore right like if it's gonna come out every six days seven Seven days, and I don't have to worry of dying before the story gets to Right, it. right. Yeah, um, because at first they were like, oh, you know, it's going to come out when it comes out. And apparently what he meant was almost constantly. Yeah. <laughs> Just never uh, not it, coming out. The uh, the density of Chojin X uh, chapters coming out is inversely proportional to the amount of fun he has streaming Minecraft. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, honestly, that's kind of all I have to say. Like, it's a fun, fun yeah, chapter. Yeah, it, it, it was pretty much good just insight. like a fun, get to know your characters a little bit better chapter. But it, it was a good one. I liked it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I like how Ellie gets into the school as well. Yeah, she's like, I'm here, walking in. I'm in this class now. <laughs> he's just like, it's not even the right room. I also like that it's like it almost feels self-aware to anime, where it's like, oh, you know, the transfer student, and he's like. This is a this is a manga. I'm here. I'm the transfer student. Don't question. She's like, what the fuck? Yeah, she's like actually freaking out about it. Yeah. Also, I also why did she threw the chalk at him and he caught it? Mm -hmm. That was a good gag for me. I enjoyed that. Yeah. Also, uh, in that panel where Ellie Ellie gets into the um room, why why are the teachers' breasts out? What? Or what? Look on page twenty four. Like, for some reason, he didn't shade her tits, and so it looks like they're just hanging out. Oh my god, you're right. He didn't shade her. <laughs> they're just, like, poking through her shirt. <laughs> That's some daring fashion. <laughs> Why did he not shade her outfit? I have no... I mean, it might have just... That I, looks, I, I cannot... That looks awfully... That looks... He didn't shade her shoulder, either. Yeah, that looks like he ran out of ink at some point, honestly. Because like, I well... can't... Get some done. Cause, yeah, because I mean, yeah, maybe it is just shading. Well, I don't but know, that's... Cause look at page 23 also. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, but there it makes sense. But from that angle, it, that doesn't work. No, that just looks like she's naked. <laughs> uh, Damn. Titty's out out of 10 in that case. Titty's out out of 10. Okay, deal. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> What's next? That's the next mug. Uh, the next mug. The next out mug. Titties out of ten. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, we'll get we'll get like age restricted on the store. 
<laughs> well, I mean, to be I fair. I don't even know if that can happen. Uh, all right, next up is The Elusive Samurai. Which was pretty good this week. It was. It was a, a nice little action chapter. Uh, I like that, that we actually got some motivation behind the dinky lord guy. So he's not just, like, purely comedic. He's actually got, like, a little bit a of motivation. backstory where that kind of humanizes him a little bit. Yeah, like, I was surprised at how much this actually does for him in the end. Where it's like, oh, yeah, like, he fights so hard because there was just one emperor who saw him as more just more than just a sniveling nobody. And, you know, I mean, he is kind of a sniveling loser, but that kind of, you know, that's that's that good stuff. That, like, gets me gets me interested in seeing more of him. Yeah, it's nice. Um, also, why is Ant Guy alive? I don't know. <clears throat> me neither, but uh, cool that he's back, I guess. Yes. I, I, I will say I like that uh, dumb Lord Guy's plan works specifically because it's so stupid and unorthodox. Yeah. That no one knows how to react to it. <laughs> no one knows what to do. <laughs> Yeah, because when they explain it, it's actually kind of smart. It's like, oh yeah, make yourself a target. Make make attacking that target a guarantee like opportunity to strike back. Like, yeah, wow, that's that's a good war tactic. Like respect to the dude. Yeah, but again, the tactician guy brought out a pretty obvious flaw with it, is that you have to have people on, on completely it. around it at all times or it stops working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you know, it was all right. It was, it was all right for that at... guy. And he yeah. seems to be out of the picture now, so that, that not much of a disc one boss there, but hey, well, you all you need people like that too. That's true. But yeah, yeah. What, what the fuck's up with the ant guy? I don't remember. What's the la when's the last time we saw him? Did he get killed? Did, did he? Was he the one who got gentle bladed? Yeah, he's the one who got gentle bladed, and he talked about how it was like the Buddha killing him or whatever. Oh, so he's okay. So I guess the Buddha didn't kill him. Well, he, he was kindness. calling. He was calling our boy. Yeah, I know. Uh, oh, uh, actually, just completely uh, off topic. I just realized I didn't read Doron Dororon. Oh, you didn't? Okay, well, I'll summarize it. And it. Imagine what you think chapter two of the most generic manga of all time is, and it's that. Okay, uh, <laughs> is that? Is this us confirming that we're dropping it? Probably. I'm going to read chapter 3, and if chapter 3 is also like, uh, then I'm just going to stop and wait for it to actually start creating an identity. All right, bet. Um, <laughs> okay, so I looked back. That... It's chapter 22 is the last time Ant Guy shows up, and I guess it doesn't confirm that he dies. Mm -hmm. It just really looks like he does. And I don't know how an unconscious from blood loss enemy in like the middle of a battlefield, no one would know that he didn't die. But whatever. Hey, it happens. Don't question it. Uh, but yeah, honestly, that's already all I have to say on this chapter too. Yeah, it was it was better than the last few. Like, elusive samurai just always gets bogged down in it, like it's strategic stuff. And when it gets out of that, it's quite good. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm glad that this chapter is sort of fun again because yeah, as you said, like the last two chapters were really weak in my opinion. Um, yeah, it seems to not... really enjoy hearing itself talk sometimes. Yeah, exactly. Um, but hey, we're back to goodness, so that's good. That's what. That's the kind of shit we want. Uh, right. What's next? Uh, next up is going to be. Uh, looks like Witch Watch. Witch Watch. It was okay. Uh, yeah. It was uh, of the frivolous chapters we've been getting lately. This is one of the better ones. Also, are you sure that it's Witch Watch next one? Because for me, it's uh, for me Blue Box. Oh no, wait, yeah, Blue, Blue Box, Box is in the top threes. So. Never mind. Forgetting uh, the yeah, format no, this... of your own program. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it happens. I've had a week, bro. <laughs> uh, yeah, this was all right. Like. Uh, the whole gag of them sort of uh, accidentally almost dating. It was all right. Like, it kind of... Once I realized where it was going, I kind of clocked out mentally because I was like, oh, okay. Okay, this is... this. We're back at anime. Like, this is what it is. Yeah, but um, I really liked her... Uh, her multi-layered plan to make sure that he looks at a crescent moon by making uh -huh. him a cake and putting it at the bottom. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that was that was fun. That was a fun little thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, if these two are gonna be like an item going forwards, I'm not a I'm not opposed to that. Yeah, I'm down with that. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, I I'm not opposed to anything as long as um our two main guy and gal get together. Yeah, like, that's all I takes. need. <laughs> whatever it takes well, for them to whatever kiss. it takes. Avenge the fallen, whatever it takes. Make the <laughs> make them kiss, whatever it takes. <laughs> I mean, I don't uh, really have anything else to say about which was just yeah, it was okay. <laughs> it was cute, and I want them to kiss. Yeah, it was alright. Uh, I want everyone yeah. to kiss except for the Tengu guy, and you don't get to kiss anybody. The, the Tengu guy can kiss himself. Yeah, that's fine. And yeah, that's fine. Uh, so what's next? Next up is Dr. Stone. O tuor pietra. Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was good. I really liked yeah. that little bit of Ryusui. Um, just kind of crying under the moon about how he, he can't cut it, even though he wanted it really, really bad. Mm -hmm. That was, that was yeah, awesome that was, stuff. That was really nice. I, I really appreciated that. I also like sort of how unproblematic uh, Stanley's return is in a lot of ways. Because I feel like last week we were sort of doom posting a lot about how, oh no, this is going to cause like drama. But this is very much sort of like, yep, this is what needs to be done. Uh, let's do it. Which in other series, I feel like I might mind. But here, I don't know, it feels right, you know, considering where we are in the story. To just kind of get that forward mom momentum going, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Also, are, uh, are Stanley and Zeno fucking... Uh, is it because of the panel where he like holds him? Where hold, he holds, holds his, his cheek chin? and like strokes his lip? I mean, uh, that's body language. And uh, if I may translate from body language, hell yeah, they fucking. They fucking, right? Okay, I'm just making sure. I'm just making yeah, sure like, we're all on the same page that they're oh, fucking. Yeah. They're sharing that bunk bed. <laughs> <laughs> they're absolutely. <laughs> uh, doing that, which good, you know, good for them. Yeah, good for you, King. Good, good for you, two kings, two absolute <laughs> chads. <laughs> Although Stanley always, Stanley is like the character that whenever I look at it, I'm, I'm gonna look at him. I'm like, wow, okay, I, I very much think you look like a woman. Yeah, I think and it's the like, lipstick. <laughs> I think it's the lipstick and it's the you know femme fatale eyes. I think. Yeah. It very much has like. I mean, you could definitely vibes. give that glare to a guy who doesn't have such a soft face, <laughs> and it would work I mean, out. Yeah. You should give that glare to Sandek. But like that, uh, that man has a very angular, very soft-looking face. Mm -hmm. Even his cracked scars—they look like mascara. Yeah. Right. Like, you know, cry, cry, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, signs. like crying mascara lines. Damn, you know what? I, I understand Zeno, <laughs> <laughs> he made showed it and show approved. Stanley. Yeah, he made the he made the rationally, uh, the scientifically rational choice, <laughs> yeah, scientifically speaking. <laughs> we should totally sleep together, and Stanley's like, yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm a... He walks in and he's like, I've done the math. <laughs> Logically speaking, it makes perfect sense for us to plow down. <laughs> Stanley, our children will be beautiful, but we can't have children. Never. Shut up. <laughs> and then Stanley's just like, What's the mission? <laughs> <laughs> What's the mission? <laughs> That's that's the only thing he knows how to say. Like they're getting down. It's like okay, Zeno, what's the mission? And Zeno's like, don't make me fucking say it's mission fucking complete. Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, we've inspired like seventeen uh, fan fictions right now in the last like two oh, phrases alone. They definitely were already written the minute that page thirteen came out. It's the minute that someone turned to page thirteen for the first time. Keyboard right, started you know clicking. You know what? I'm taking one for the team. <laughs> Uh, where is archive of our own? There it is. Let me. Oh, he's looking it up. Yeah, I'm looking it. I'm finding this shit. Um, Zeno. Uh, fuck. There are too many characters named Zeno that people want to see fucking. Um, 
Yeah, that's a pretty common name. Dr. Stone Zeno. Uh, n there's a lot of names in this one. I do not want to see. <laughs> uh, Fatherhood Doesn't Suit Anyone. Featuring Dr. Zeno, Kohaku, Chrome, Senku, Ryusui, Gen, and spoilers. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is going on? <laughs> this one is called Dr. Stone is the same, but Zeno has a five-year-old son. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, I found it. I found it. There is one, uh, Stan and Zeno fucking, and it's called Mission Implausible. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. incredible. That is phenomenal. Absolutely great work. <laughs> And it's tagged with um, it, it's tagged with bad flirting and love <laughs> at first sight, and a word I definitely cannot say for uh, monetization reasons. <laughs> bad flirting. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, oh god, yeah, there's another one. Oh, oh God, no, I cannot read a single one of these words here. Oh no, I'm closing <laughs> this one. Jesus. Uh, the things I do for this podcast, man. <laughs> Struggling out here. Yeah. As I said, I'm taking one for the team. <laughs> oh God. Um, Mission Impossible is really funny though. <laughs> Shout out to fanfic writers, you're insane. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, this was this was a decent chapter. I, I enjoyed it. That's my yeah, was, that's my uh, verdict. A yeah. lot of uh, heartstring tugging for me. Yeah, a lot of a lot of tugging of other things. Apparently, yeah, apparently a lot of people are tugging in this <laughs> camp. I cannot believe that we made a chapter <laughs> in which Ryusi like opens up about his emotions about Stanley and Zeno fucking. Well, who draws a panel of them doing that if they don't want to advertise that they're fucking? Do you think Boichi has like a personal a personal porn folder of them? I like to think that that was not even like in the script, and Boichi was just like nobody's fucking right now. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, if you look at the scene as well, there's like no dialogue. It's literally just like Boichi going ham. Mm -hmm. It's just Boichi being like they fucking. Yeah, you know it. Yeah, yeah, they. Uh. <laughs> They fucking, okay. you know they are. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We want to move on. <laughs> or is there anything substantive we have to say on No, I, 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 any, any deep plot thread that I would have had has been destroyed. So. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that's a, <laughs> that's a gay sex out of 10 for Dr. Bone anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Next that's, up is uh, that's a clip. <laughs> Which was good. Just it was good. Us. This was yeah. This had like I'm gonna I'm gonna look like someone who's seen one anime in their whole life as well, as soon as I say this, but had big bleach vibes right at the end. I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> I absolutely knew it when I was reading it. This is like a bleach moment. <laughs> big big bleach moment when when Mash comes out. But I love that he comes out in like his doofy face. Yeah, that's <laughs> not so like played serious right away. But the thing is, right, like, his face is doofy, but, like, his body has, like, the details of his, uh... Yeah, you know, of, like, his actual form. combat body, yeah. And the sound effect is, like, doom. Oh, it's <laughs> you know, so like, fucking funny. Like, menacing. Oh, uh, that, yeah, that's cool. Um, but, yeah, this was another one of those chapters where, like, it's just a single thing happening, but it happens, like, over and over and, like, in a cool way. With uh, Dot being, like, really, uh, you know, the classic shonen trope of, like, I believe in my friends, no matter how many times you throw me in this vat of acid. And they're like, okay, uh, in the acid you go. <laughs> All right, back to the acid then. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I guess. <laughs> uh, so like, the, like they were going to leave him alone after the first one. He just keeps going and they're like, oh, oh I mean, okay. Yeah, and after insist. a while they're like, All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't even react to it. They're just kind of like, uh, he's still <laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess we're throwing it back in the acid. <laughs> you there, get in the soup. <laughs> get off to the soup wall now. <laughs> so 
especially because their move is literally called Magnet's Ball Sandwich. <laughs> uh but no it was cool like for as funny as we're making it sound it was a genuine like raw moment yeah it also was, when was like when he was just he... like uh getting fucking blasted and he just kept going you gotta respect mm-hmm. that yeah that's like that's like that classic good shonen shit right there mm-hmm. um but honestly i've already run out of things i'm so hyped for match yeah. to beat the shit out of this guy now yeah that final spread as well is really cool oh just like all punch. The... Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. Marshall always does that, where it like just manages to have that impact. Like, I wanted to go, mm, but then I burped in the right moment, so <laughs> have that instead. That's, that's you know what? That's the same. It's good enough. Yeah, that that's a Marshall joke if I've ever written one. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> it kind of is actually. <laughs> You know those videos where they like take an anime and replace all the like fighting sound effects with Ed, Ed, and Eddie sound effects? <laughs> yes. It's just that, but with burps. <laughs> That's just, those videos are just like Mashal's default state, though. <laughs> That's what inspired Mashal. Yeah. Someone watched one of those vids and he was like, oh, yeah, I could do something with this. <laughs> He's like, what if I make a shonen battle manga but make it Looney Tunes? Wait, <laughs> One Piece exists anyway. Oh, no. Oh. You've done it. <laughs> You've done it now. <laughs> oh, don't worry. It'll be it'll get uh, drowned out by uh, the my hero segment. <laughs> so. Uh, oh yeah, that's you... true. And any bad stuff that has come out so far is not going to be a problem. Uh, yeah, we're right. gonna drown it out with uh, with uh, yeah. We'll get to it. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone watching the show right now is like desperately clicking ahead. <laughs> yeah, just skipping. To hear me say some absolutely wild <laughs> shit. Because, especially because next up is Protect Me Shugamaru. That sure was a chapter of Protect it Me Shugamaru. sure was a chapter of the same joke. Yeah. The, the only joke in it that I thought was funny was when he was like, just romance my robot with Scythe. <laughs> <Yeah, no. laughs> Slash so Takizawa was actually when, funny. When she's like, I'm never going to get a boyfriend. And she looks over and it's like offering her his sight. <laughs> Slash Takizawa son. Yeah. <laughs> and then she kills it. And he's like, Slash Takizawa, no. <laughs> you know what? Actually, Slash Takizawa is my favorite character so far. I think he might be mine too. <laughs> The absolute king. <laughs> That's like the like, panel where she's in the whirlwind he makes and he catches her gently. <laughs> what a fucking king. Yeah, honestly, that's our <laughs> respecting king. The absolute chat slash Takizawa. Slash Takizawa. <laughs> Something about that name is so funny. Too. Know, it's really funny. <laughs> 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 slash slash <laughs> yeah I mean okay I'm also gonna say the joke where he's like quick look over there it's a pack of Yu-Gi-Oh yeah cards. it's just a Yu-Gi-Oh booster pack oh <laughs> uh, I, I haven't I haven't owned Yu-Gi-Oh cards since like oh primary school they were they were big <laughs> back then oh yeah they were huge back when I was in like elementary school yeah, yeah. Now, I still have like I have like uh, two briefcases, one filled with Pokemon trading cards and one with like Yu-Gi-Oh cards. And I I need to sometimes sit down and see if there's anything like of value in there that I could like pawn off yeah, for like a lunch. Yeah, I mean I don't have anything uh, super valuable because back in our elementary school that wasn't actually very smart. Because I remember one guy got jumped for his uh, Blastoise. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like he just. Yeah, that, that that was an interesting experience. Yeah, I never had like it. it. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, elementary schools are horrible because they're inhabited by the worst kind of people, children. You know, that, that's you how know it works. That's true. Yeah, the worst human beings, children. Yeah, because they they're just human. Slash Takizawa. <laughs> Honestly, couldn't we all to have like to have scythe hands? And to gently pick up the woman you're you're sworn to protect, and to not impose on her, 
despite her rejecting you over and over like you, nah, you know what slash takizawa actual peak fiction character like it's <laughs> it's crossed over away from comedy into like genuineness i i love this little guy i know yeah <laughs> he's actually kind of cute yeah. <laughs> fuck this is best genus all over again <laughs> Why do we keep doing this? <laughs> I like how we started this segment by saying there were no good jokes in here. And here we are just dying of laughter. <laughs> well, the main joke wasn't funny at all anymore. The like, yeah. oh, oops, I fucked things up by protecting you, like, is not funny. Like, when he yeah. accidentally shoots her with the cannon, I was like, what even is the joke there? <laughs> he just turned yeah. the cannon around and shot her. Like, that's not funny. But Slash talking about it. Fucking incredible. <laughs> uh, what did you think of the villain this week? Uh, the the obsessed guy, he was fine. Yeah. I mean, uh, some of the ways he popped up were kind of fun. Like when he's in the in the sink, yeah, and he's and like, he... drink me up, angel. <laughs> he's like okay. spitting water out of this. Also, the final reveal that the skull he's talking about is just like a Japanese comedian. Yeah, it's just a photograph of like an actual guy. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> but yeah, ultimately, um, it was a slash Takizawa out of 10. It was a slash Takizawa chapter, that's for sure. Yes. <laughs> All right. What's next? All right. Next up is going to be uh, Ayashimon. Which was cool. Yeah, it was fine. Yeah. Uh, the the fact that Ayashimons are made out of money. Yeah, that was a neat little that was probably my favorite part of the chapter is just that like we got a little bit of tidbit of what they what they are that they're <laughs> created from money. Yeah, like I I have no clue what to think of that because considering they're in the Yakuza town and this is a Yakuza story, that is an interesting thing to put into like, you know, this demon society. Mm-hmm. Ayashimon really feels like one of those series that's gonna have like an interesting amount of lore to it once it sort of you know has a bit more chapters in the backlog um which it'll hopefully achieve but aside from that like the chapter itself was fun like cool he fights yeah, a guy i liked the uh that was boss's famous fire strike an attack where he just hits him with the hammer <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's a Got him, that was boss's fire stain strike. It's a simple attack where he just kind of smacks him with a hammer. Yeah, he just he just has hammers and he just hits him with it. <laughs> My superpowers. <laughs> yeah, no, that that was fun. But besides that, this was, you know, this was it was alright. Like I'm not getting bored of this yet. Um, which is more than I can say with uh, the previous series we talked about. So Yeah. It's fine. Yeah, it was like, just uh, like, okay. I, I don't think, like, other than the neat little lore dump that we got, there wasn't too much that was going on that was any different. It was just, oh, hey, fighting guy is going to fight again. Mm hmm Yeah, and it was like, you know, it was all right. Um, it was very much sort of just a, hey, this is how we're getting our office chapter. Yep, we're going to beat this and guy I'm, up and get an office. Okay. Yeah. I'm that, assuming that... Uh, I'm assuming that from now on we're gonna start getting sort of into the main plot, I guess, because they're sort of like once, establishing themselves. Once we get like themselves. a base of operations, we're probably gonna shift focus, mm -hmm. which will hopefully happen. Hopefully, yeah. We'll just have to see. Uh, do we just want to move on then? Yeah. Yeah. No? Okay. It was. Uh, I don't even have a good joke for the out of ten. Yeah, it, it was money out of ten. Also, a slash talkies out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Slash Takizawa, <laughs> our savior. <laughs> so are we talking about Duran 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 or whatever the fuck this thing is called at all? Or are we just... I have no, literally no clue what happened, so okay. I cannot say so, anything. So, uh, quick rundown. He's like, oh, why don't you just tell people that you're a nice one of these fucking things? And he's like, I can't because uh, people will hate me because my, my people are bad. And then he was like, okay, uh, what do we do? And then they just kind of leave... Uh, and then the big monster attacks these two samurai, and they save them. And then they're like, our goal is to do our best so that everybody likes you now. So it's like just, you know, the same generic-ass goal that everyone has is like, first, I have no powers, and everyone hates you. 
so I'm going to be the best in this world with no powers, and then we're going to do so good that everyone has no choice but to love you. Mm -hmm. And nothing happened. There was okay. one really good gag in it, though. Okay. Where he's talking to the little snake guy, the little Kusanagi boy, uh, at the end of this pier, and these two samurai police show up, and they're like, there have been a ton of fatal incidents around the river from monster attacks. This area is completely off limits. And he goes, well, how in the hell was I supposed to know that? And then it cuts to a panel of him jumping over a bunch of, like, caution tape and barriers with a giant sign that says no entry on it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's pretty good. All but right. uh, other than that, not much to it. Okay. All right. So I guess I didn't miss much. No, you really didn't. And then the, the girl samurai from chapter one has located them, and I guess she's going to start becoming a character next week. All right, well, so. sounds sounds all right. It's, yeah, it's fine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> let's see, what do we got here? I think we're now we're in the top threes, officially. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. first one up should be Blue Box. The, um, uh, it should, we keep saying it every week, but holy shit, does this shit just have like a direct channel? To every single experience I've had as a teenager. Right? Like, what? Uh, it's really giving me that feeling, you know, when social media first came out and people started realizing they weren't special, like, at all in any way. Um, mm -hmm. Boy, this is really, this series really gives me that feeling. <laughs> mm -hmm. Of, like, wow, yeah. nothing I've ever done is unique to me. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's okay. Not many people have made a podcast like this where they pretend to be talking about manga and instead just gay around for like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> it's just okay. that Stanley Zeno panel, but it's just us. Well, okay, so which one of us is Zeno? Which one of us is Stanley? Ah, uh, that's a good question. You are the okay. more sciencey of the two of us. Okay, but uh, I guess the only way we can settle this is we need to do like a lip reveal. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever has the fuller lips gets to be Stanley. <laughs> <laughs> no, why? Why are we put? Why are we, Why are we making like so many good thumbnail ideas for the one episode where I knew what the thumbnail was gonna be? That's wrong. You know what? You know what? That's okay. I don't want to be. I don't want to be Stanley or Zeno. I want to be Slash Tashikawa. <laughs> so you want to be the Slash Takizawa to my? I, I don't know. So, yeah, I can also. So you're anyone because he's the best. So it doesn't matter. Can I also be Slash Takuzawa? Because he only deserves the best, which is himself. <laughs> Baby, you want to be the Slash to my Takuzawa? <laughs> the Slash to my Takuzawa. <laughs> uh, we've not talked about this chapter. No. Uh, well, I, part of me doesn't want to because it just hurts all the time. Yeah, it's interesting because this is one of those series where, like, it's all predicated on a bunch of misunderstandings and, like, hesitations. But they all feel, like, completely reasonable within the characters, which is really hard to do in writing. Like, you know, everyone knows that, like, really annoying telenovela where, like, everything could be resolved if people just talk to each other and it's annoying as hell. And I feel like Blue Box is always, like, teetering on the point of getting into that territory, but catches itself by giving these characters really, like, relatable ways of why these misunderstandings keep existing, why they don't, like, open up. Like, this fear of failure and fear of, you know, destroying the social circle you've built up is not presented as, like, this dramatic, life-altering thing, but just, like, a shitty thing they want to avoid. And I feel like that's super cool. It, like, almost effortlessly dodges all the traps of writing, uh, like, teenage drama, which I'm super impressed by. Uh, so, yeah, no, this, this is another good chapter it is quite a good chapter opinion. also boy taiki's a fucking idiot i mean he's a boy yeah i mean i know he's a teenage boy but god damn like i look at look at page 16 and then he's just like huh wonder what she's got. what's up with her and could go back to carrying my sport equipment around how fucking yeah. transparent could she possibly be <laughs> The, okay, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, play devil's advocate for a second and say that, you know, we're seeing all of this through like a very dramatized lens but if someone just tells you oh, you're so cool, Zen uh, I don't would the first thing you assume would, would be, oh, 
they like me like romantically no but if they just went on a giant speech before that summarizing why they think that with like, an incredibly red face and then they ran off afterward in full sprint i might think a little bit more of it what if they had bad lunch and they just have to grab the toilet <laughs> huh <laughs> you know they're trying to help you out and they realize uh oh someone's knocking <laughs> Then you know what? I'll I'll accept the misunderstanding, but Jesus. <laughs> no, I mean I agree. I'm I'm just I'm I'm just being obnoxious. I agree. Like it is kind of dumb, but I don't know. In a way, it kind of also works because he well, is. Well, I mean, he's a teenager, and I've definitely been there. Like there, there's definitely times where there's pretty obvious cues that everyone picks on up on, but you. But, yeah, of course. Uh, God. And also. You know, he's not only a teenage boy, he's one that we've seen has a one-track mind once he focuses on something. And right now he's focused on, you know, sports and chinatsu. So he's just going to, you know, be really oblivious to anything else that doesn't go into that direction. Uh, so I, I didn't have an issue with this whatsoever. This was cute and cool. Um, I hope uh, I hope Chino recovers from that bad chipotle she ate. <laughs> We all been there. <laughs> Girl, give up on this man. You need to go text slash Takizawa. <laughs> he's like, he's gonna cut your problems in half. Taiki probably your house. You, all right. Slash Takizawa does. <laughs> you wanna go to a fireworks festival? No one better than slash Takizawa. <laughs> Could you fucking imagine just like the realistic looking art style of Blue Box? <laughs> it's just a little psych robot. <laughs> Actually, I know this is the Blue Box segment, but can we quickly talk about how Slash Kizawa isn't even like a good robot design? It's, it's, just, just, it's just like a Roomba with a head. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Roombas, uh, here's a tangent of this episode. Did you know that uh, when it comes to Roomba uh, like repair services, all across the world, a phenomenon that's been observed is that people ask for the same Roomba back, presumably because of the emotional connection they have to it. Really? Yes. People, when given the choice between getting a completely new model and uh, getting the current one repaired, when it comes to household appliances, no appliance has a higher, please give me the same one back ratio than Roombas. That's, huh. Yeah. Now we know why. We have our own emotional attachment <laughs> to our Roomba. Dude, dude, if if anything happens to Slash Takizawa, uh, I'm dropping jump, which it's a dumb thing to say because something happened to him already. Yeah, he got killed in this chapter. <laughs> 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 They're gonna bring him back. <laughs> like uh, you know, other series bring back their most popular character too. So <laughs> Shigamaro, if they know what's good for the series. <laughs> They're gonna bring back their best character slash <laughs> I cannot wait when like the first volume drops and I flame it on Twitter because the volume cover is not slash <laughs> <laughs> also, I like how you cannot just say one half of his name. You have no. to say the whole thing. <laughs> if you say either half by itself, it's either dumb or like normal. It's the the coalescence of the two that makes it phenomenally <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> you know, this is like you know, I, you've never. I don't know if you've played. I, I think you said you haven't played much of the Yakuza games, but this is like when you meet uh, B Bob Onigashima. Yeah, you know, it's, <laughs> it's the same sort of vibe. I fucking love that panel of him just holding his little scythe out to her. <laughs> We're back to reviewing Shugamaru. We're going back to it. <laughs> um, to to give, I swear to God, poor Blue Box fans. Every week we get like a huge Blue Box segment, <laughs> and, they, and it's never minutes. about Blue Box. We're just thirsting over a little Roomba bot. <laughs> <sighs> you know what? I know we were trying to figure out which one of us is the Zeno and the Stanley, but I know that Zeno is the slash Takizawa of that relationship because he has the same hands. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. 
And obviously, yeah. if you're the slash Takizawa in your relationship, you're doing something right. Exactly. <laughs> we all need to. Uh, we we all need to strive to be more like slash Takizawa. So, kids, if you're listening, remember: tape razor blades to your hands. <laughs> Don't actually do that. This is not legal advice. Neither for liability of us can be purposes, held please don't do that ever. Yeah. For liability <laughs> purposes, don't listen to a single thing I say ever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a horrible person and role model. <laughs> you know who's a good role model, though? <laughs> Slash Taki <laughs> 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 Oh, God. <laughs> Uh, my hands are tied, bro. I think he needs to be on the thumbnail. <laughs> he absolutely does. Oh, I have so many ideas and only one episode. <laughs> I think we're just going to make all of them and like do them like var variant covers on Twitter <laughs> and in Discord. When we release, yeah, when we release the volume cover. <laughs> Show them chill volume one. It's just slash. It's just a Roomba with like a crown on it and like a heart, like a uh, card around it, saying "My beloved." <laughs> I'm trying to drink my tea, but I'm gonna spit it out. <laughs> um. So to bring all of this back, uh, blue box good out of ten. Yes, blue box very good out of ten. <laughs> yes, blue box. Makes me relive my relive my childhood trauma so heavily. I need to cope by uh, attaching myself to sentient Roombas. <laughs> it's the only way to get through the the PTSD exactly. that Blue Box puts you through. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what's next? Uh, it looks like next up is gonna be Undead Unluck. Yo, shit was good. Shit was popping. Yeah, it was real good. Uh, their little duo attack they do right at the end. I fucking love that spread. It looks awesome. Like the... A lot of the like panels here are super good as well. They are really good. I like uh... Rip not necessarily being right on board with the plan. Um, mm -hmm. I like that we got Chikara back and we got that gross bit of Andy ripping off the skin that he locks down with his uh, uh... It's God, it's so nasty. That has to be one of the worst special moves in Shonen Jump history. Oh, <laughs> Ripping God. off all your skin. I like how Andy <laughs> has just been fighting like raw ass nude this entire time. A king. Just just like dick out. Just the exact opposite of slash touch touchout. <laughs> I can't say like, his name anymore. Uh, the divinity eludes you. Um <laughs> No, you know, that's how you got to do it. Like, uh, fuck clothes. This is a big fight. You're going to be out there the way God made you. <laughs> and I love that his explanation of how to get around it is just to be like, oops. <laughs> <laughs> like, the biggest... <laughs> it's kind of funny because obviously it's their intention to accidentally do it. Making it like, is it really an accident? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but and so the way they're selling it is just being like, whoops. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah. It's just like the fakest shit I've ever seen. Also, um, really looking through this sequence, this fight is... Go if uh, Under Unlock gets an anime, this fight is going to look phenomenal. Because, like, all fights, which is just, like, a bunch of characters running towards the same giant enemy, they always slap. They're yes. always fun as hell. Yes. Um... <clears throat> Also, I really like the panel. Every panel, basically, where Rip and Andy are, like, fighting, shit looks mm -hmm. uh, kind of like it slaps. Yeah. Like, the, um, like uh, when he the lighting first and everything. It. When, um, mm -hmm. Like, look at Rip's face when... What page is this? 11. Mm -hmm. I fucking love that shot. Yeah, that lighting. Mm -hmm. Just, like, Super the dramatic. dramatic lighting off the swords. Looks so good. Ugh. Can't believe this series tricked us into liking it. I know, right? It's like we talk about. I think we talked about this more than any human being has any right to. But I really was just ready to hate this. For oh yeah, like, I was. I felt in the first chapters. I felt about this series like I feel now about Duran Duran, um, but worse. Yeah, no, this is something that I feel worth mentioning over and over again. If you're tired about uh, hearing about it, uh, the skip button exists. Try it. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> uh, but you know, this is just, I really like how I also, um, you know, this series is all about negators and all that. And I really like how the story itself like doesn't play by rules of conventional manga storytelling at all. And consistently does like weird shit that you wouldn't expect. Like if you think back to like the the author arc and the whole thing where they're like they're writing their own story in a way. Or like here, where it's this big final fight, but actually it's like, no, we have to pretend fight, or one side has to pretend fight to then hurt the third side by quote unquote accident. Like that's such a cool, interesting way to like, yeah, break the rules of manga storytelling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Also, this is another one of those moments where you look at the page and you're like, okay, the opening is playing when this gets animated. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. On one hand, that's cool. But on the other hand, I never want this to get an anime because I never want to see Andy undock his skin. Yes. I don't need that. I mean, it's going to get that one, I'm pretty sure. Didn't it already get confirmed? No. I mean, The confirmation we got was from, you know... One of those accounts that popped up a day before they confirmed it. Oh, uh, okay. And, yeah. Yeah. I mean, on Twitter, you always have to be careful because a lot of people just make an account with like a cryptic name, say this thing that everyone wants to get an anime is getting an anime by Studio Good, and then they disappear again. Everyone's like, "Oh my god, it got confirmed!" And it's like, I can say that. I, I can. I can fuck. You know what? I'm gonna tweet that out right now. <laughs> um. Uh, what What's a series that needs an anime? Uh, obviously, I don't know. What's what's one that people uh, would re- react to? I asked you. No, wait. You know what? I'm gonna go with Mashal. Okay. Confirmed for Jump Festa. And so <laughs> produced. KV and PV confirmed. Oh, it produced been the slash by... Takizawa manga. <laughs> <laughs> the slash. Produced by Studio... You know what? I'm going to just make it up. Studio Takizawa. <laughs> Dot. There you go. I'm going to uh, disable replies. And see what happens. <laughs> nice. And only people who are watching this will know what I'm saying here. <laughs> well, that tweet will be up for at least an hour before. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, if you were upset at me saying it... <laughs> I am not sorry. My studio, Takizawa. <laughs> <laughs> it's already got a like. Yeah, me too. I saw it. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, so if you think I'm like a reliable source of anime news, I've got, um, I'm sorry. Use your trust like that, but also this oh, is Oh, man. <laughs> All right. Um, do we have anything else to say on Undead Unluck? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, what do you give it? Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm, my brain is not working on the spot today. Uh, Oops, too much what a silly Walker. accident out of 10. <laughs> Whoopsie out of 10. <laughs> Oopsie daisies out of 10. <laughs> All right, what's next? Uh, next up is going to be My Hero Academia. Wow, they're talking about oopsies. <laughs> 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 just straight out, straight into it. Um, okay. Uh, I, so I saw a couple of people like in the comments of last week's episode being like, oh, you guys should have just waited to react because uh, clearly something else was going to come. And it's so dumb that you got upset at the Invisi Girl thing. And I just want to say that if you genuinely were sitting there watching a weekly review podcast and being upset that we reacted to a chapter that came out weekly. I just want you to like look in the mirror and smash your head in. It's funny too, because I, I said that. I was like, someone said, hey, yeah, oh, I can't, let this be a lesson to you to wait and stop doubting a professional. And first of all, calm down. This is not like the greatest gift to reveals, all right? This is still just okay. But also, uh-huh. I was like, well, why would we wait? This is a weekly review show. Like, we react to the chapters. And the guy was like, why can't you just take your L? I'm like, okay. I'm okay. going to go. <laughs> You're like, okay, here's the other thing, though, about the whole wait a week. Yeah, what what's the magazine that My Hero Academia comes out in called? 
Oh, it's called <laughs> Weekly Shonen Jump? Wow, it's almost like you're intended to perceive it on a weekly basis. And on another note as well, why is it that it's only when it's criticism that people are like, oh, wait a week. But no one had to wait a week to like call the Invisigirl thing the best thing oh, yeah, ever. The, the and- single greatest, like, Horiguchi knew the whole time that she was going to be the one. Look at all this deep, subtle writing. <laughs> like, Yeah, exactly. Jesus like, Christ. I'm sorry, I have to wait to say that it's ass, but you don't have to wait to call me a dumbass for disagreeing with your fucking loser ass thread about why a character not existing is actually better than a character existing. Okay, (laughs) all right. Like, this is just a great way of telling who is just not reading with their head and who's just sort of there every week. How many people who were like screaming at us about like, haha, it's not her. When not only last week did we say that she could just be a red herring because he does that a lot lately, but also she might just be looking at the real traitor, which is exactly what happened. Yeah, it's literally what we said. And also, um, I want to point out that if you were there last week telling me about how this is, oh, the only way this twist can work out. Like, oh, this is the only way Hori could have done it. You're stupid for expecting anything else. Yeah, I better see you trashing this one because apparently anything but the invisible girl is bad writing, right? So this should be bad writing, but it isn't because of course it isn't because any fucking idiot with a brain can tell you that giving a plot point like this to a character that has pre-established motives and a presence within the within the audience is a better idea than giving it to the like D-list character. Literally anyone could have said that and been right. Like, oh... I fucking hated interacting with people last week because it was so annoying. Oh, yeah. It was, like, insufferable talking to anybody about this. And don't get me wrong. The Aoyama one is way better. This is a much better character to give it to. It's still not, like, world-ending. Like, you know, all the people, once again, acting like this is the greatest thing that's ever happened to manga. Chill out. It's good. It's good, though. It's legitimately, like, a good one. Yeah. Like also, it's um, uh, all the maybe it's just because I'm not, like, a hardcore MHA fan, so I really don't give a shit about this character. But, like... The fact that he's the traitor got completely overshadowed by the reveal that at one point All for One had a twinkly belly button laser and he saw fit to give that to him. <laughs> Just imagine All for One's fucking fighting All Might and that's the quirk that rips out All Might's stomach. <laughs> it's the <laughs> twinkly just, belly button. They're grappling and he just shoots his twinkly belly button laser. All Might, you could not have foreseen this. <laughs> It's just this big, scary picture of All for One, and you realize he's about to give this kid a belly button, shiny laser beam. Yeah, yeah, that's the other thing. Like, his parents sold their lives and his life in return for this quirk. This is, to to quote the greatest politician of all time, this is the worst trade deal in the history of America, maybe ever. (laughs) Yeah, really? You didn't, like, ask to pick it? You just let him give you the fucking belly button laser? Fucking giving him, gi- giving Aoyama the sloppy seconds. I can't believe this shit. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, ugh, I gotta get rid of like a couple of these jobber quirks. <laughs> oh, you're sad that you don't have one? Here. Um, also, uh, while we're talking about it, what the fuck was the point of the Invisi Girl cliffhanger? Just to be a red herring. I mean, Hori's done it a lot lately, so it's like we said, it could easily be like with the um, the panel with Stars and Stripes that everyone freaked out about, about like, why did no one say that All Might had a student? And it's because obviously that she wasn't actually a student. And we talked yeah. about that at the time too, that like that's probably not actually what it means. He's just been doing it a lot lately. He's been leaving like cliffhanger endings and then changing them in the next chapter. Yeah, that's true, but I, I disagree with people calling this a red herring because that's not what a red herring is. Well, okay, a red... it's not a red herring. It's more just like a lie. <laughs> yeah, like, like it's a misleading. It's, it's more just intentionally misleading you by telling you what the answer is and then being like, just kidding. Yeah, because the thing is, a red herring in uh, the literature format, at least, is considered you know a bit more long form, like the long con. You make you sustain a lie for a longer period of time. A cheap, like, cliffhanger that is just there to, like, throw you off for seven days. That's not really a red herring. You know what a good red herring in My Hero is? Is um, that time Aoyama got, like, almost revealed to be the traitor. And then he was like, no, never mind. I'm just weird. And now it's revealed that, no, actually he is the traitor. That's act- that's an actually good red herring. Because it completely threw us off Aoyama's trail for a long time. 
you know, with only people like uh, Pineapple still insisting that he is a traitor. But I mean, you know, that's Pineapple. He's insisted on everything so far. Love right. you, guy, my guy, if you hear this. Uh, but um, except the, the dad for one theory, if that ever comes through, I am actually pulling up on Pineapple. <laughs> Because, like, I don't care if Hori does it on his own accord. It's somehow Pineapple's fault. I'm I, sorry. I'll co-sign that. Yeah, it's somehow, it's somehow his, fault. his fault. Pineapple, I love you, but I also know where you live. Also, question. Why is everybody in these fucking woods? It's a sunny day, bro. Like, why, why did his parents pick right here? And just, like, everyone's out here. Like, I thought the Invisible Girl was going to, like, come back and tell everyone. But no, Deku's just, like, walking. There. He's just, like, yeah. on the way home from the supermarket or some shit. He's got, like, a bag in his hand, I think. <laughs> oh, no, it's just his yeah. dumbass Kingdom Hearts glove. Never mind. I mean, the thing is, um, a lot of about this moment is a little... I won't say forced. It's a little weird. Like, also, the, the fact that the parents, like, just conveniently reiterate everything he's done. Yeah, to I mean... him. That, that's clearly, like clunky exposition that i have to deliver to the audience and i the characters obviously know it act like they don't because it's the only way to make it come through like no, it's not even that it's more so kind of like, right well right but it, by doing that they're like relisting a million fucking yeah. things yeah it's not as elegant as possible but then again i kind of i'll kind of take anything after last week because um i am really glad that a lot of things i was worried about last week didn't come like we are getting more training that is cool i'm genuinely very happy i was wrong about that um, I'm glad the trade reveal is something good because yeah, Oyama is a good character to give that to. Mm -hmm. um, I kept memeing about how no, it should be Minari. The only thing is cooler than him than Aoyama or uh, Kurama himself also works well. I like that, um, you know that that this sort of makes him more interesting in retrospect because now you sort of look back through the series, shit, like he's actually a kind of involved in this. You know, like this gives the whole moment where he uh, hides in the woods during the camp arc. And then comes out to fight Compress, a whole different like flavor, where it's, he's essentially going against the orders of his parents and of all for one there. Like that's good shit. That's how you do a good reveal that like retroactively makes things better. I'm not gonna say that this is a fantastic reveal or the best of my hero. That's still Dobby, but um, this is good. This is good writing, and I'm enjoying it. That fuck out of this. I also really like sort of how Hori focused in on a lot of the faces this week. Like, that double Yama J fucking nine. losing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, really that's good. good. In general, like, a lot of good faces in this chapter. Um, also, like, um, Deku's, like, look of utter betrayal. That's good. That's good artistry. And, yeah, like, I, 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 I wish we had seen more of this Hori for the last couple of weeks. Like, why was the road to this so annoying? Well, I've seen a lot of people um, blame his editor because apparently he has a new editor and it's the same one as the editor for Red and... Um, Samurai 8. Samurai 8, yeah. Yeah, I know. But yeah, I mean, I've seen people say that because the editor did suspiciously come on pretty much two weeks before the Dobby reveal. And the Dobby reveal is dead. So it's possible. But it's, you know, it's kind of like with uh, Dragon Ball, right? Where uh, it's hard to really tell how much was just the editors and how much was Toriyama being himself. Um you know, even with extensive amount of mutation that we now have on Dragon Ball. So it's hard to tell, because editors between series also have different levels of authority. Like an editor for one series might basically be a second author, and for another series, like with JoJo, for example, it might be like a minor nuisance that the author occasionally just leaves on red. Um, so, you know, it's always hard to tell. But definitely, like, Hori has been on a weird streak lately, but I'm glad that... Um, this is, uh, you know, back to, you know, ba back to what I expect from Hori. Like, this is good. This is good, and I'm glad that it is. Um, also, yeah, we I think we get the single best look at All for One's face in this chapter, which is interesting. Uh, the one where he's like giving that him Twinkle Star. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I don't think eyes. we've ever. Yeah, I don't think we've ever seen this much of his face before. Um, also. I th yeah, they invited him to their home as well because you can see like their wine glasses in the background. If you go, f if you go uh, like back through the anime, they do live in like sort of a very bougie like French mansion. Doesn't so yeah, sense. no, <laughs> they were just like, "Hey, creepy man with like holes in his hands, can you give my son a good power?" And he's like, "What naval laser? Sure." <laughs> yeah, if he wants <laughs> fucking naval laser, here you go. 
Yeah, there you go. Um, but yeah, this is the only chapter in a while that has also made me sort of excited for this like final confrontation. Because they do set it up very nicely. Like, oh yeah, it's an all-out war, but it has a couple of conditions. That feels good. That feels like a good setup for it. Um, I, I do find it kind of funny and sad that, you know, Deku has unlocked a jillion quirks. And there's Shoto, who's still stuck on, I have to make the fire side my own. Which he's been stuck on for, like, the entire series so far. Uh, so that's a little... Eh. But I kind of wish we would have gotten more stuff from him. Like, more progression. But it is what it is. Like, I'm not gonna... Shoto is just a fun character, especially due to his connections to Dobby and Endeavor. So I don't need him to develop something super crazy. I just... Whenever we get, like, another panel of him going, like, oh, I have to balance my two sides, I'm like, dude, last the first time you said this, I was in high school. Like, get on with it. <laughs> yeah. this A lot of these are kind of slow burn, and I, a lot of people are saying, oh, it doesn't feel rushed. And, like, I guess it doesn't feel rushed, but it just feels really weird that he's being like, we got to wrap all of this shit up, like, now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Bring Mirio back, reveal Dobby, get the traitor out, like, fucking... Give me a list of everything I've talked about in the last five years. I got to make sure I talk about it quick. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously something being... Okay, uh, fellas, people who are listening, something which is entirely subjective, and you cannot just factually say, oh, it's actively rushed, it's actually not rushed. Um, to me, I definitely think it's rushed, but a lot of these plot elements are starting to appear at a point that is very much not Congress, which with uh, how series did before, the war, essentially. Like, if you look at the war arc uh, and everything beforehand, the amount of, like, uh, big plot reveals for arc, you could say, were very slow. Like, it was very much sort of building towards things and then letting them build, like, the absolute breaking point and then hit, uh, and then pulling the trigger. Um, it's very rare that Hori just introduced something and immediately, like, made it go as far as he could. Um, obviously, obviously, he did do that. Like, uh, one could argue that Overhaul, in a way, was like that. But Overhaul gets away with it because it's just such a long arc and it's one plot element. But then you get to like the post-war era where You know, the entire post-war time span has been only one arc so far, and I don't, I cannot count how many, like, series-changing events we've had in that. Um, so, to me, it definitely feels like, if you look at a story like a checklist, my man's just chuck, 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 going through it at this point. Yeah, it really does not feel like he's used just slashing shit off the list, like, <laughs> as quickly as he can, which is fine, I guess, but... It just, fe it, compared to how it used to do it, like, we waited, the Davi came out in, what, like, 2015 or some shit? And I uh, mm -hmm. waited six years for that reveal, and now we're getting every reveal all at one time. But it is what it is. Yeah, uh, I mean... All right, let's talk thing... about this popularity poll. Uh, <laughs> well, okay, look. We, we've been known that the Japanese have no taste when it comes to My Hero popularity polls <laughs> since last time when Shindo got in for no reason hey guess what shindo also beat uh shigaraki shigaraki again. yep i know again twice got beat by deku's freckles yep twice lost to deku's freckles one of the best characters in the whole series well i don't know if you know this anecdote but in the first my hero popularity poll half the characters didn't even make it on but other stuff like naruto and deku's yeah i remember shoes. naruto getting yeah. a vote yeah, so, uh, you know, it's not... My Hero popularity polls have been garbage from the start. The only consistently good thing about them is, you know, you have Bakugo at the top, which I think is, is fair. He is a cool character. Um, although, uh, oh god, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start a whole thing again. I'm starting to get tired of the fact that Bakugo is supposedly so developed, but he still very much just acts the way he has for, like, 100 chapters. Like, I feel like the the war should have changed him a little more than it has. And I know people say, like, oh, but he's not going to change his entire personality. And I agree. But, like, they're maturing. And he's still just yelling at everyone. 
And that's kind of disappointing to me. Um, I feel like Hori is someone who can do better with characterization. So, you know, that's just food for thought. Yeah, I mean, but, I uh, guess it's kind of like the Vegeta thing, right? Where it's like, do you do you change him so much that he doesn't feel like himself anymore to people and then people don't like him as much? Or, you know, how do you do it? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, and aside from that, I mean, the big thing of the popularity poll is Rhodey being in it. Which uh, is just utter proof that the Japanese audience, the way they do popularity polls for manga is they just vote for whatever they liked in the last My Hero thing they experienced. Not necessarily the manga, but like whatever. They That's were why just that kid doing from the time. movie is in there? Yeah. The roadie from the movie, you have Shinso because he was in season five. You know, that sort of stuff. The best thing about this popularity poll that has nothing to do with the voting is that on the page, on the double spread, we have a turtle. Well, a tur tortoise uh, that Kishima is riding. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. And President like Mike, who for some reason people like, is on like a parakeet. Oh, he's loud and he does like funny pseudo English in the anime. So I'm not surprised that the Japanese like him. Like that's that's their kind of character for sure. Uh, you can meme him easily as well. And then Hawks is there because Hawks is hot. And, uh, you know, there's a surprising amount of middle-aged uh, women watching My Hero, both in and out of Japan. What is, so oh I guess God, it makes what sense. What did someone reply to me? I, mean, I said something about Bakugo winning again, and someone responded to me on Twitter with, the, the absolute chokehold this kid has on middle-aged sex-starved women is insane. <laughs> Oh, don't get me started. <laughs> Thirty-year-old women, uh, like, incessantly fighting on Twitter whether or not Bakugo or Deku would get pregnant, uh, is one of the things I wish I could bleach my eyes of. All right, but, I didn't know that happened. So we're gonna move on. <laughs> Serious. It's a whole tag. It's called Pregku. All right, that, I'm all right. I'm cutting you off. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so uh, to finish off on my hero, in the spirit of the way um, the way people responded to me and to us last week, you know, we're, we're good hosts, we listen to the people, so the rating for my hero from now on until it ends is always, from my part at least, it's always going to be, we'll see out of 10. Because apparently, I can never give an actual judgment on this as long as I live. So yeah, <laughs> okay. a strong we'll see out of 10. All right, Fuck mine everyone. is uh, a little little shrug because eh, it's all right out of ten. Yeah, all right, it's pretty good. It's all right. Time uh, for the pussy part of the magazine. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so next yeah, up that's is what's be... next, right? Uh, what's that? That's what's next. The the good part. Yes, yes, the the quality. Uh, yes, Jujutsu Kaisen. Uh, dude, this chapter fucking slaps, dude. God, it's so good. Higuruma being like. You know, we'll uh, we'll meet again, and then his little like, if I stay with you, I'll hate myself more. I was like, no, mm -hmm. <laughs> no. Yeah, and then Megami just... just being like the biggest badass on the planet. Yeah, he really putting those uh those Toji jeans to work. Yes, that's for sure. Going down into the shadow and coming out and tossing that dude off a building. Mhm. Mm that was really cool. Um, also, I'm just always happy to see Demon Dog totality. I feel like that's Even such a cool stabbed design. Stabbed in the snout. Hey, it's 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 shown in manga. I am here for violence, even when it happens to people I like. You know, it's it's just the way it is. Um, one thing that was funny to me about this chapter in the official release is that they didn't translate uh, Kenjaku's Chinese. Yeah, that was kind of. Well, I mean, weird. I saw some people on Twitter were talking about it, and I think the the point. Um, they said made sense is that it, what he says doesn't really matter. It's just mm -hmm. supposed to be the reveal that he's talking to someone in an, another language. So he's somewhere yeah, else I in know. the world. Because, I mean, he doesn't say anything important anyway in Chinese. Yeah, what, he what says, does he say? Like, thank uh, you they or say, something? Uh, the Chinese, I guess that's the Chinese Jiu-Jitsu government or the Chinese government. They say, sit down, and he says, thank you for coming. Or like, thank you for having me, something like that. Okay. So yeah, um, it's just like, we are talking. Yeah. Haha, -ha, I am evil guy. Also, have you noticed that Kenjaku's stitches have changed? Yeah, they look like they're like a scar more than actual stitches yeah. now. Yeah, I wonder if that means anything. I don't know. It's hard to tell because like Gage's art style has changed a little bit mm -hmm. uh, post Shibuya. So I can't, you know, it's hard to tell. Like, 
is that intentional? Is it, is it just a different way that he's drawing it, or is that intentional? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I mean, I'm that's so used always... to being terrified. I mean, that's always sort of the the problem with all weekly mangaka, right? Like when you when you're trying to analyze like small visual details, uh, like with my hero, when I said that, oh, when um, Stars and Stripes deactivated her, I want to be like All Might rule. She changed art styles, and we were like, no, that's just how Ori draws. And I'm like, yeah, sure, okay. Um, so you know, it, it's always difficult to sort of mitigate these things, but. Moving on from that, this was a cool chapter for sure. Like, I'm kind of liking Reggie. He has a cool vibe around him. I do wish that Megami had, in fact, already taken out the girl. Not you didn't have to kill her, but just like get rid of her because she kind of annoys me. Um, but I do like Reggie. Yeah, I like his whole shtick. I like his theory that um, the barriers are basically a setup, like for one obvious person to win, and then Kenjaku mm -hmm. just takes them out all at one time. Mm -hmm. Um. And then, okay, so who do we who do we think the eyeball, the mystery helper is? Because apparently whoever that is is coming to help Megami, according to the preview. Oh. It says oh, that yeah, whoever, next week Megami's getting a powerful ally that's coming to help him. Oh, well, I don't know. I, uh, the, the only the hint I can think like... of is Mei Mei, maybe, because of the birds at the end? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, the birds even get, like, a cacao. No, yeah, no, like, that they, case, get, yeah. they get an intentional panel of the birds, like, look, these are birds. Mm -hmm. So, like, th my first thought is Mei Mei, but I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah, no clue. Like, because uh, when I first read this chapter, the eye kind of just looked like it was exploding next to Megami. So, I just assumed well, it I was I assume that it is. I, I, I think it is. Because, I mean, it's got, like, lines shooting out of it, and then Megami's got the, the flash on his face. Mm -hmm. But that might be, like, maybe she's just getting him out of there. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I mean, we do know that uh, Mei Mei's little brother, Ui Ui, has a curse technique that allows you to teleport. So uh, that might be what it is. Because uh, we've never actually seen him use it. We just know that that's how Mei Mei got out of Shibuya mm -hmm. and into Malaysia. So, uh, oh, so you think like maybe that's that's teleporting Mega Me out or something? Possibly. Yeah, that maybe um, that maybe like the birds were the birds dropping off Ui Ui, and the eye is him activating his technique. Yeah, something I can see like that. that. That could be possible. Um, but the interesting it's thing just is suspicious like suspicious to me how much they went out of their way to be like, look, birds. Yeah, exactly. But the thing that I'm questioning now is um so Kenjaku's whole plan with the calling games was to like raise the level of like cursed energy users in Japan so that the merger with Tengen would be more effective, right? Am I remembering that correctly? I believe so, yes. Yeah. So if he genuinely is planning to just bomb the place then that kind of means that he has a completely different plan than for what we're, we've are we been told so far, right? This is definitely a revelation, yeah. The, yeah. The, this guy, well, I mean, this is just his working theory. Um, but Reggie's theory definitely doesn't necessarily match what we have heard so far. Yeah. Um, now, here's a fun little thing. Uh, so Reggie says that Kenjaku is going to use a bomb on the place. Uh, Kenjaku has once before referred to something as a bomb. And that's Sukuna. Now, I'm not saying anything. But that is kind of interesting, especially considering that Yuji is in the barriers. And that, you know, the, uh, Sukuna has been dormant for a long time now, so it feels like he's going to be relevant again. Soonish. Yeah, he hasn't really done much in a while. Yeah, so I wonder if that's if that ties into it because I mean Kenjaku did go through the trouble of having Yuji eat the finger, and we did recently get that panel, like, that uh, chapter where it was like, oh yeah, this was all my plan. Yeah, where he so I do wonder the shit out of it. Yeah, yeah. So you know, I do wonder how that uh, functions. You know. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, the thing with Jujutsu Kaisen. Is every t it's something that I love about it is every time it tells you something, it gives you a new piece of information that you didn't have before. You're like, oh, mm -hmm. that answers this question. And then it gives me 36 more questions that I now need answered later. 
Yeah, um, exactly. So I'm looking forward to that. I also like, this is a, such a small thing, but I, I love Megami's absolute faith that Yuji's going to get the mission done without him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Which, that's yeah, really cool. A, a new rule is going to get added pretty soon that's going to do this because my buddy's going to do that. So give me your points now. That's yeah, cute. that's really cool. Sweet. Like, I, I like also, I, I saw someone say recently, like, uh, oh, the character work in Jutsu Kaisen is so bad, the main characters might as well be strangers. And it's like, I disagree so much. I don't know how you could, yeah, how you could think that. Yeah, like, it's not as overt as in, as other manga series, but you can clearly tell that they have opinions on each other that, you know, are fairly articulated. Like, just because it isn't reiterated over and over again doesn't mean that it's not there. Yeah, because there's not a double spread of Megami being like, he's my best friend. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. yeah, they they definitely care quite a bit about each other. I mean, shit, look at what happened after he supposedly died. Yeah, exactly. Like, or, you know, a lot of them, like, uh, you know, Maki and Nobara, their relationship is one of those things that it gets talked about a single time, but it doesn't really need much more. Like, you just know that there is this relationship between the two, this, uh, you know, this mutual respect and this admiration from Nobara's side. So, you know, that's just, uh, that's just cool shit. I, I, I think it's weird when people are like, oh, there's no character work done. Like, there's plenty of it. It's just very efficient. It kind of reminds me of when people say there's no character work in My Hero. Like, it's absolutely there. You're just used to, you know, more classic shonen where every emotional connection is uh, shown by big gestures and yeah, not by, you know, from just, the rooftops. Yeah. Instead of just being, you know, good people who help each other out and who have opinions on each other. Like, yeah, I mean, you mentioned Uraka screaming off the rooftops, but honestly, my hero for most of its run is fairly... Oh, I like... was referring to Naruto when I said that. Oh, well, okay. Also <laughs> true. I mean... Interesting that that's right where you went, though, because in hindsight, yeah. But, yeah. Uh... <laughs> but no, I get it. Naruto also... I mean, Naruto... The thing is, and I say this every couple of months, and every couple of months I get jumped for it, Naruto has such a stranglehold on people's perception of what shonen is supposed to be. It's actually crazy. That, yeah. yeah, people have this idea that you can't rip off too much of Naruto because you're obviously going to be worse, but you also should always do the things exactly the way it did it. Like, uh, you know, character relationships should be the way they were in Naruto, where they're very overt, but funnily enough, not elaborated on. Like, you know, you need to have, if you have two rivals, they should be like Naruto and Sasuke, where they say, they tell you they're best friends, but you never actually get to see them be friends in any capacity. Yeah. Uh, it's you know, it's like almost that. the complete inverse of what we're talking about right now, where it's like, Naruto will break down in the snow weeping at someone's feet because they won't help Sasuke, but then, like, they're barely ever friendly. The yeah. only time I can ever think of them, in the manga at least, because supposedly people have told me, because I've complained about this before, people have said, like, actually, this is where anime filler is actually good because they get moments together, and I was like, okay, well, fine. <laughs> but in the manga, anyway, the only time I remember them really being friendly was, like, they bonded a little bit in the Land of the Waves when they were training, and mm -hmm. then... Obviously, Naruto freaked out when he supposedly died. And then they still kind of had, like, a jokey buddy relationship in the forest for the shooting exams. And that was it. Because yeah. right after that is when Sasuke gets all pissed off. Like, and he, you know, he, they split up, basically. Um, they fight Gara. Sasuke loses. Naruto wins. Sasuke gets all cranky and pissed off. And then they fight in that hospital. And then he's just, like, a shithead to him forever until the rest of the series ends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, not to riff too much on Naruto, but it really is something that uh, I feel like a lot of people, be it consciously or unconsciously, do, where they're like, in their head, either it's Naruto or it's not real shonen. And that's so dumb, because Naruto wasn't the first shonen. It wasn't the last. It certainly wasn't the best. Well, so, you know. You know, it, it's one of those things where I wonder how much of it is just like, western like tsunami era stuff because like you see a lot with dragon ball 2 and you also see it with kind of battle like as a genre where like it doesn't matter how big or influential you are if you're not a battle shonen western people act like you don't exist like i've mm -hmm. seen people say oh slam dunk nobody gives a shit about that and i'm like what the fuck are you talking about it's like one of the biggest manga of all time like mm -hmm. and you know you see it a lot recently with um haikyuu where people will be like mm -hmm. oh yeah the only popular manga from like the mid 2010s to now like the the big three of the twenty twenty the twenty ten era is like MHA, Black Clover, and you know Demon Slayer, whatever. 
And it's like, well, Doug, Black Clover is like sold one third as much as Haikyuu has. Like it, it's not even close. Haikyuu's like crazy popular, but it's not a battle of manga. So people are like, that's its own thing over there in the corner. It doesn't count. I mean, honestly, Black Clover, the Black, the English Black Clover community has such a humiliation fetish. Because they like they make, do. This is not where I was hoping to go with this, but they kind of do. Yeah, like they make these big sweeping statements about other series, but then like it's so clear that it's just the only way they can keep the conversation going at this point because Black Clover has had like a random movie announcement that uh, apparently is going to get elaborated on Jump Festa, which is good for them, like actually genuinely good for them. I'm glad, you know, I don't want any series to fail except Boruto, but that's a separate issue. Um <laughs> But, you know, they've got this random, unhyped movie reveal. They have a manga that, like, despite being fairly old, like, you know, six years now, I think, is still consistently at the bottom of the table of contents, which is not great. I mean, it's not indicative of anything concrete, but it's, you know, not well, a okay, great Okay, you want to talk sign. indicative. Indicative is sales figures. And, you know, they'll say forever because, uh, and to an extent, I agree. Sales does not equate to quality. I get it. Uh -huh. But consistently year after year when other series are coming in and becoming more hyped and more like it got outsold by i think chainsaw man and spy family this year spy family mm -hmm. is like a bi-weekly series that you can only read online mm -hmm. and then you know obviously chainsaw man is huge now for manga wise anyway uh these mm -hmm. are two series that don't even have an anime yet yeah like there's been one pv for both of them and they're like obliterating Black Clover. Black Clover, it, this sounds like me shitting on it a lot, and I'm sorry because I wasn't. This wasn't where I wanted this to go. <laughs> but like, um, I think it's at like 15 million sold or something like that in its entire mm -hmm. run. And mm -hmm. then you know they're saying it's like, oh, it's up in the big, the big king category with Demon Slayer and My Hero, and it's like, My Hero is over 50 million. Jujutsu yeah, Kaisen's hit 60 now. Mm -hmm. You got Demon Slayer, which is already in the 100 million category. Like, your your shit is just not popular. I don't know what to tell yeah, you. Yeah, like uh, fucking Doctor Stone has outsold uh, Black Clover at times, and Doctor Stone has had you know a fairly sort of under the radar anime adaptation. Yeah, Doctor Stone's anime is not huge, and honestly, its manga sales aren't that impressive. Yeah, so it's not and great. Thing, yeah, and the thing with Black Clover is also that. It's not like it's it released at a bad time because you have Dr. Stone, you have My Hero. To a certain extent, you have uh, Demon Slayer and Jutsu Kaisen sort of in the latter half of that sort of four-year period where things released. Like, My Hero is pretty much as old as Black Clover. They released very... Like, My Hero released, I believe, April 2014, and Black Clover started publication like January 2015. So, like, a negligible difference in time. So yeah, Black Clover is one of those things where like I don't dislike it a lot because I don't think about it very much. And I don't think anyone's like investing into a bad horse by liking it. I just think some of the shit people say about it in the English community is actually wild. Yeah. Considering I think, I think sort of what, what the it series is. I think is. it just has the biggest like disparity between its performance and like the level of gravitas that some people will give to it. Mm -hmm. like on a consistent basis because you see people every week being like oh once again Tabata continues to create the finest thing in Jump and I'm like it's like people saying this shit about like Yozakura family or something it's like hey, calm down mm -hmm. like yeah it's fine I'm sure I even liked it for a little bit back before I started really not liking it because it just started getting really boring but like mm -hmm. fine like but you never see anybody say that shit about like other stuff like nobody has ever said on that website and been taken seriously like wow haiku really is the finest shonen that's ever been created of all time and I mean, got black clover people saying that every week every sunday well well okay let's be real um people say that about any series but i think it's only black clover where like people actually believe it basically well i, I feel it. like you will get people like individual people being just like i really like this series i think it's one of the best and that's totally fine like, if you're a mm -hmm. huge fan of whatever, Yu-Gi-Oh!, and you're like, this is this is the the number one jump series, I'm not going to jump on your shit about it. But, like, there's a whole, it feels like, gathered group of people who every week, they're like, okay, no matter what fucking happens, no matter what anything, and no matter what the world looks like, we have to say mm -hmm. Black Clover is better than everything else at everything. At all times. Yeah. And it's just so weird, because it's like, 
it I've seen a lot of like, manga anime hype trains in my day. You know, mm-hmm. like I grew up with the big three actively running, like starting out. Like I bought volume one of Naruto when it came out. So like I've seen plenty of hype trains around it and Black Clover just feels the most unearned. The people are going to quote you on that and uh, insult you in the comments. You do know that, right? That's fine. All right. It's good. fine. Just, just, you know, just so you have it. I mean, I mean, I get insulted in the comments every single week, so. Uh, that's true. I mean, meat probably too, but I don't look at them. <laughs> yeah, I look at them for like the first couple hours. No. P- poor babe. I know. And then I watch YouTube videos at work. So, oh man, someone called you an insufferable cunt in one of the comments the other day. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're on the money. I am an insufferable cunt. I was like, God <laughs> almighty. I, I read it. It was, it was one, it was one of the people doing the whole like, uh. Maybe this will teach you absolute idiots not to ever doubt a professional writer like the great Kori Koshi. And yeah, and he, he, he went on his rant about that, about how like we're the biggest idiots ever and we've proved it and no one should ever take us seriously again because Kori Koshi lied and we believed it. Um, and, his, and then he ended it with especially that insufferable cunt oceans. <laughs> Which is funny because... <laughs> Cunt is like a really bad word in uh, America, in, in, right? In America, it's considered very, very bad, yeah. Yeah, here, it, no one cares. Like, that that's kind of like calling me an idiot. It's sort of on the same level. I don't, I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's funny, like, seeing the difference in the way that people react to it. Because, like, if you, if you say that here, people, like, lose their mind. It's, like, the yeah. worst thing you can call someone. And I'm like, I don't understand it. <laughs> and then you see, like, I'll have Australian friends or whatever on Twitter that just use it all the time. And I'm like, hmm. Yeah, I mean, but to kind of, I guess, get back to that comment, because I'm going to give it that time of day, because I guess I'm a masochist. Uh, the whole thing like, oh, I can't believe you doubted a professional writer is so funny to me specifically, because I've literally taught creative writing. I've been paid to teach people how to write. Like, I'm sorry, am I not a professional? Because I guess I'm not famous. Like, I don't know. Is professionality even that important when we're talking about fucking cartoons? Yeah, and, right, like, this this guy's not, like... Yeah, I and know. I mean, in general, that's a fun... I mean, it's a fun thing to discuss as well, because people always bring uh, bring that up, where it's like, oh, well, you just don't know enough to appreciate, and it's like, that's... Oh, that can be the case, but at the same time, if, you know, the good old analogy, if someone cooks me a absolutely terrible meal, I do not have to go to culinary school to say that it tastes like ass. right. Like, there are things that you can intuitively say, I don't like this for these and these reasons and not be just completely wrong. Like, but the thing is, obviously, no one has any consistent beliefs on writing at all. I have completely, uh, I have, I'm now completely rejecting the idea that anyone online, especially sort of, you know, the anime community has a salient idea of what they actually think of writing. Well, I think the problem is that good or bad writing has just become like, I do or don't like this. Yeah, exactly. Like, there's no salient idea or theory there. It's just, if I like something, I'm going to use all the big words I know to defend it. And if I dislike something, I'm going to use all the big words to tear it apart. There's no, there is no knowledge there. And, you know, I'm not saying that you need to be a graduate to be able to talk about, again, fucking cartoons. But if you're going to try and use big words, you might give people the impression that you actually know what you're talking about. Which I now know for a fact many don't because, dear God, these last two weeks have been eye-opening. Like, a- again, if you were sitting there calling us dumb because we think, oh, the Invisi Girl thing was stupid, and you think, oh, it's the best thing ever, then you, by all, by all means and purposes, should now be sitting there shitting on Hori because he changed the reveal. But you're not. Because you're not, this yeah, you're saying it, is this is also the better. best thing ever. Yeah, so it doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, you know, like, you can call me an insufferable cunt in the comments. I don't really mind. Like, I am. I, I do come on this podcast and talk some wild shit. I am aware of that. But it's a weekly review podcast if you wanted. Like, the, the other thing is, obviously, when you read this thing, you get the, these things, you get the impression that people just want to tune into a podcast where every week, about every series, we just go, this was good. I can't wait to see where it goes. Like, is that the only verdict people want from us about everything? probably <laughs> yeah like just oh yeah this was okay i can't wait to see where it goes so shonen chill over shows over like no reasonable person would watch that 
like maybe one episode for the novelty and that's it. So yeah, uh, that's sort of my two cents on comments like that. I know this is the Jutsu Kaisen segment, but I don't know. I, I, I guess I like getting the into The final segment sort of always spirals into whatever our final thoughts are for the day. Well, actually, we should finish this, the episode off uh, properly, which is that um, the big takeaway from this week's jump is that get yourself a boyfriend like Slash Takizawa. <laughs> if he don't love you like Slash Takizawa does, then he ain't for you, all right? Yeah, he just ain't a keeper. <laughs> if he doesn't hold you with his giant scythe hands, he won't hold you at all. <laughs> uh, do we end it here? Is I that... think so. Um, flashing up our very generous patrons. Uh, keep an eye out this evening for the message from me. It's going to be the final warning to turn in your uh, December poll options. If I don't get them by... These usually go up late at night. So I'll, I'll give you tonight and all of Monday, listeners. Uh, and then by Tuesday, I'm going to go ahead and put up the poll for December so that you guys all have time to vote. So you're going to get your last warning messages tonight. Make sure to get them in. Or if not, you're going to be waiting until 2022 to, to get your name on the poll. So thank you guys for watching another episode of Shonen and Chill. And uh, we will see you next time. Yeah. See you around for another week of being insufferable. <laughs> <laughs> and